Hi, welcome to Making Meals with Maite. I'm Maite, and uh, today is the second day of summer break for us. Yay! So happy. If you read my blog, I recently posted about Teen Tummy Triumphs and how our youngest son, Danny, used to really like arroz con pollo. Well, he um, just started football conditioning at the high school where I work and, um, and also doing wrestling. So I'm looking for ways to make sure that he's got uh, food in his tummy because he, he didn't have much of an appetite before, but only after one and a half days, he I, I see it already. He's like, what do we got to eat? <laughs> So I want to feel really good about what I give them to eat. Um, yeah, so I said this would be a great opportunity to share um, a video on making arroz con pollo. So I'm all about um, trying to keep things as simple as possible, right? Uh, that um, energy efficient um, meal prep making and not going to the store multiple times. So uh, even though I might show certain products that you might not have at home, I would definitely urge you to um, just use what you have, you know, until it's convenient to, um, you know, to grab what you need at another time. So I hope you have a great time watching this video on how to make uh, Puerto Rican arroz con pollo. And in honor of my heritage, I am wearing my Puerto Rican Nutritional Facts shirt. I don't know if you can see that. Probably not. I don't know. I'll figure out a better way to post it. I hope you go back to mindfulmamita.com and take a look at the original post uh, that kind of inspired this video and uh, make sure to subscribe and, um, and follow. All right, so a little while ago, um, I didn't have any fresh chicken um, for my arroz con pollo, which I probably should have said what arroz con pollo is. Um, it is simply rice with chicken, right? So, <clears throat> So I, I didn't have any fresh chicken, but I remembered that I had some um, chicken tenderloins in the freezer. So I simply put them to defrost in uh, some cool water. And, uh, and just a few minutes later, they were ready uh, to be cooked. So I used uh, what we call adobo, which is, um, you know, just all purpose seasoning, right? It has some um, onion powder, garlic par powder, salt. Some of them have pepper, some don't have pepper. Um, so, uh, you know, so I seasoned um, the chicken tenderloins and then cut them up into chunks. Uh, the redness is from, uh, let's see here, Sazon. Redness is from Sazon. So, um, that is what gives it its, um, the saffron in the sazon is what gives it um, its color and additional flavor. Um, so it's not spicy, not spicy at all. Um, it's just very flavorful. So if you do not have uh, adobo at your house, do not worry. You can uh, use a little bit of paprika, you could use onion powder, garlic powder, salt and pepper to season your chicken. I do have a caldero or a, you know, um, an aluminum pot, which you can find, um, you know, pretty much anywhere, even at the uh, grocery store, I hope so. And if not, if all else fails, then of course you can uh, order one on Amazon. So I've been uh, heating up some olive oil on the bottom of the caldero, and I'm gonna cook the chicken for about five minutes. I'm pretty sure I am going to lose all of my Puerto Rican privileges 
Uh, because I forgot to add the sofrito first. If you're wondering what sofrito is, it's basically a cooking base to all of um, all of our Puerto Rican cuisine. It is made of, I think they're scotch bonnet peppers, cilantro, onion, olive oil, uh, and green pepper. So you, um, you put all that yumminess uh, into a food processor and that uh, makes a base for soup, beans, rice. Um, yeah, it really gives a, just a wonderful flavor. And again, you know, the peppers that we use in our cooking, let me lower that, they're, they're not spicy at all, but they are very flavorful, okay? So, uh, so what I did was when I remembered the sofrito, I actually added it um, to the chicken and just let it cook for a minute. But when you're doing this, you want to add the oil, the sofrito, and the chicken, the seasoned chicken, to the hot oil to cook for five minutes. So, um, yeah, we're just going to pretend that didn't happen. Um, as far as the sofrito, the recipe that I'm going to reference will give you the steps and the measurements for how much to use. Um, me, I, you're gonna have to forgive me, I just use the store-bought. I haven't seen my mom or my pa uh, since COVID, pretty much. So, no homemade sofrito for me, but I will use what I have, right? Um, and it'll still be wonderful. Not as good as the homemade stuff, but again, we do with what we have. So, after, um, after the sofrito and the chicken have cooked for a few minutes, we're gonna add uh, some tomato puree uh, and then the rice and the water uh, and just a tiny bit of salt. Um, so the ratio, last time I made rice with the stir fried veggies and rice, my mom um, corrected me. It should be a one to one ratio. So if you have one cup of rice you should have one cup of water so what i'm gonna do is actually use um two cups of rice and one cup of water and one cup of chicken broth to give it um even a little more flavor uh, so let me get that going now i added uh two cups of medium grain rice um and I stirred it a little bit to incorporate the oil into the rice and just let it toast for three minutes. I'm pretty sure right now there's a little tiny tree frog called a coqui in Puerto Rico just falling off of the branches. <laughs> but I uh, I strive for transparency, right? Trying to just be myself and keep things real. Uh, so I laugh at myself and I learn from my mistakes. Um, the last time I made our, um, yellow rice, I forgot to add the tomato paste. This time, I also forgot to add the tomato paste in the beginning. So <laughs> no worries, we're just going to roll with it. So what is happening uh, now is I incorporated about two, um, uh, two and a half tablespoons of uh, tomato paste. And, um, and I also added um, the, the, actually I changed my mind, I added two cups of uh, chicken broth uh, to, the, um, to the rice. And I tried not to stir it too much. At this point, uh, once you stir it and everything is incorporated well, uh, you want to uh, make sure that um, it's your um, your heat level is maybe between a four, maybe a four and a five. Uh, you want to let the uh, water evaporate, okay? And so you don't touch it, you don't cover it, you just, excuse me, just simply let it cook. Um, after I stirred it, uh, I realized it needed a little salt to my taste and it was flavorful, but it just lacked a little bit of salt. So, um, you know, once you stir it, just take a little taste and see if, you know, if you want a little 
bit more salt or if it's fine the way it is and then you just let it do what it's got to do. Once the water has evaporated, you'll want to stir the rice from the bottom up and um, lower the heat to low and let it um, cook covered for about 25 minutes and then it should be done. Okay, so from, from pot to plate, it did take me a little over an hour to put it together, but I think that's because I kept pausing to record. So um, just to make it purdy, I did add some pimiento, or um, you would know it as a roasted red pepper that I had here at home and a, a few cilantro leaves um, to the plate. Uh, you'll see that I presented uh, some books um, that mean an awful lot to me. Um, Abuela, uh, The Legend of the Hummingbird, Arroz con Leche, and um, How the Sea Began. So they all have their ties to um, to, to me and to Puerto Rico. Um, I am a nerd, self-professed bibliophile. I love books. I love buying books. I love collecting books. And my husband is just like, oh girl, you've got to stop. <laughs> so I will make sure to um, include a link to Better World Books, which is where I try to buy most of my books, if I can, um, they uh, actually accept donations from libraries and bookstores, and then they sell the books at a discounted price. And, um, and then uh, some of the funds go to, um, to support literacy programs. So um, yeah, uh, I, I think my love of books probably came from mommy because <laughs> my earliest memories are seeing her reading a book. <laughs> she always had a book in hand. Uh, there were stacks of books around the house. And um, I don't know, uh, I, I mean, I love words, I love to write, but those are some of my earliest memories of books, right? Of um, having a book in my hand and, and discovering that I could read and understand what was on the page and connect. So, uh, so gracias mami. So that's, you know, all hail my mom for, um, for being who she was, right? Always having books around the house, always having a book in her hand and, um, nature and nurture kind of took its place with me. And now I'm pretty much the same. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I hope uh, you can check these books out. Um, Abuela and Arroz con Leche, I believe, come in bilingual versions. So you can um, have um, a version that has English and Spanish side by side. Uh, and the legend of the hummingbird and how the sea began are already in English. So, uh, so I hope... I hope this was this video was helpful, maybe a little hilarious with um, with my mishaps, but uh, I, I certainly hope that you enjoyed. And uh, buen provecho, which in Spanish is our version of bon appetit or happy eating.